Hey guys, fix it here. So now I have a hot water heater problem. Um, yesterday, a few days ago, we were dealing with water just not lasting, hot water not lasting. So as we turned it on at the faucet, it would last, take a shower of like 15 minutes and then it would start to get cooler and cooler and cooler and then it was cold. Um, you wait five minutes and it would work again. So I have some theories on to why this is happening in my water heater, but let me take you to the water heater and show you how to test all the components, thermostat, power coming in, and finally your element. Um, those are really the only three things that could be wrong with the water heater. Obviously, if the whole thing is garbage, you're gonna to have to buy a new one, but that's probably not the case. So let's go see if we can check it out and fix it. Okay, here, so we're back down at the water heater. And there's two things that actually run a water heater. You got the lower element and your upper element. Lots of cases, this is gonna be, your element will be bad. Um, so let me show you how you can just access that way. These two screws here, two screws here, and you know, you'll go into the system. Okay, now that we got it open, we can access this. Now realize this is high voltage coming in through the top legs here. Let me get you closer to the top and I'll show you how to do this. So here we are at the top element. This will protect you from touching the legs. So the legs come in the top here and they those are hot. Those, those should be 220. You're going to test those with your voltmeter while we have power. Then it goes down to the other leg right here into the thermostat. This right here will cause a, this to trip when it gets to 125 and it will go up. It'll turn on if it's below that and it will turn off if it's above that makes sense so that's a switch on and off and then these two then continue down to your element and put power into your element that heats the water up from the top bar of the of the water heater obviously if you reset that would click if it was actually popping which mine was doing because down at the bottom I'll show you that one so this here is the lower unit which is there's no lead coming well there's leads coming from the top but there's um, there's a little less work or workable parts here, so you don't have the power coming in other than straight into the, the top uh, thermostat. So take that off, just a little screwdriver under this left back piece. Now remember, this is high voltage, so now everything you're touching in here is going to shock you. This is like putting your finger into an outlet. So don't touch this stuff until the power is off. Now it comes into your thermostat up here. This right here will trip when it goes, obviously, below 125. And, and it will turn on. And if it goes above 125, it turns off. That power then connects and it goes down to your element, which then charges the element until it trips that off again. So when it reaches 125, it will disconnect that. Now there's some other stuff that I don't understand where the two elements work together. Um, so maybe some other people online can actually answer that. But when the low one turns on, the top one will still be on sometimes. And then when you run out of water, the top one only will be on. I, I don't know, but I'm going to show you how to, to test each component here as you isolate it. So the first thing we need to do is disconnect the power. But before we do that, we're going to check to make sure we're having power come in. So let's do that now. So what I've done is I've pulled that safety flap up and I've taped it to the top so I wouldn't have to deal with it. So now what you're going to do is set your voltmeter to 750 because uh, if it goes to 200 it's just not going to read uh, so 750 because it sh should give us a reading between like 220 and 260 something like that so one on and these don't need to be red black they don't need to match it's just an alternating current so i do have 245 244 volts coming in from my main power into the two legs at the top so we're good there so now let's kill the power and start testing components. Okay, here we are at the fuse box. You see the, the water heater is right here. We're just gonna flip that off and we're gonna double check to make sure it's off at the legs. Now that we're back here, power's been turned off at the fuse, fuse box. Now we're gonna test to make sure we have no power going to this unit. Moving it around. All right, we look good. This is now not under power. Now let's disconnect the power from, or the, the, co the cables from the element. Um, I don't know if it's necessary or not, but I know that I like to isolate this piece so I don't have any of the interference or resistance coming from any of their sources. So 
So that's about right, about 13. Uh, you want to set your ohm meter to your 200 setting on your resistance. If that makes any sense. Um, that way it's sensitive. It should be reading about 13 or 14. So that's a good element. So that's not the problem. Same thing here applies. Well, as expected, that one's good as well. So both of the elements are good. Um, what would happen is if these were bad, you would get a one reading on there. So it would mean it was, an op it was open. So basically, anybody who knows how an element works is it's resisting the electricity going through it, so which makes it heat up. So if that element were to break inside, it would lose that connection inside. And um, sometimes it gets so bad that the element will break and then fall onto the, the tub side. So you can go you can go here and then go to your uh, the ground and it will actually give you continuity through there. So that's a good thing too, that with your metal into any of the legs that you're gonna not get any continuity with the, the hull of the heat, water heater. So both elements are good on this. And now it's up to the, the thermostats. What happened on mine and I can show you with the, with the with the new one or with the old one um, under here this is where the connection is made so that the water heater gets to a certain level and, and connects the two pieces of metal which then connects this so that this gets turned on um, so what happens is that shorts out over time what I found with mine as I turned my heat up and down and it hit that spot where it was supposed to turn on it would actually crackle and pop you could see electrical popping coming out of there which then on the upper one where the fuse is or the reset button it would actually pop that fuse so I ordered a new one of these this thermostat was 10 bucks on eBay uh, free shipping so or locally I think it was 25 bucks so it's it's not a huge fix it's just being able to isolate where the problem is and for that it was worth me buying this and find out what it was um, let me grab the old one and I'll show you what this one looks like, um, what, why it was burning and why it was sparking. So here's a photo of it. It actually shows that where the arcing had occurred, it discolored it. And this should all be the same color of metal as you see on the top, whereas the bottom, it's a no-brainer. This is the thermostat that was broken. Alright, so now that everything's buttoned back up like it was supposed to be, we're going to put the lids back on. No brainer. There we go, that's it. Well, we got it all buttoned back up and uh, looks like a normal water heater now. So with a few simple tools, a screwdriver, uh, both a Phillips and a flathead. This doesn't even need to be a drill, this is just because I was lazy. The main point is the voltmeter. Having a cheap one of these around will save your tail. So, fixed it. You can too.